All right, so David, you were Daryl Waltrip's crew chief at Dieguard, and you can't talk about those years without mentioning Bertha. Mm. What made that car so special or we, infamous, whichever way you want to put it? We, uh, back in, we probably had cars like that everywhere, but uh, Daryl start naming these cars. Uh, you know, he was, I think, the first one that started mm -hmm. naming cars. Mm -hmm. we, we, you would race on a Sunday at Richmond, and then maybe Darlington, you had to sign in Thursday morning at Darlington. We'd use the same car. Mm -hmm. There was none of this taking it all apart, blasting it, and <clears throat> all this stuff. You'd go home, change, pull the motor, one guy would be change packing the, the hubs, checking the brakes all out. Change the gear. Change the gear. We'd never take the spindles. We'd run mm -hmm. ball joints five, eight oh, races, oh, yeah. unless we bumped the wall or something. And, and that, but now these cars nowadays. Remember the ball so, joints had them big steel yeah, cups yeah, on them, so they yeah. wouldn't. But uh, he named that car because we run it. Back then it was, I think, 24, 26 races, and we run that yeah. thing 20, 22 times. The only place we didn't run it was Talladega and Daytona, yeah. and run that car everywhere. I think I have the fender to that car at my house. The front yeah. fender, the Bertha, I think. It is it? House. Do you now? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so a picture of it. I think that'd look good in the studio. What do you well, think? Well, I, I may as well bring it here. It's laying in the garage. <laughs> Talking about Bertha, why was it Bertha ran like 20 more laps of Pocono than anybody did that one year? I don't know, though. though. They had they used to have scores. Remember, you, they didn't have the you know, lines going across the transponder. <laughs> did Bertha have a lot of fuel line in it? Yeah, yeah. yeah one time. It, <laughs> for some reason, I didn't. It, 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 <laughs> How we got caught? We need details on Bertha. Uh, yeah, we you know, that the one that had, I, I noticed did, that you didn't answer my question. Yeah, what, what, was, what made that car special? There was a lot of cheating shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> I never forget. We it, sold it, that that's car. That's not the car that had the the nitrous in it. That's your Talladega car. And that was a ta Daytona. Yeah, that was a that Talladega was Darryl's, Daytona car. That was a different yeah. car. Bertha didn't have nitrous. Yeah. So yeah. I got the truth out right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, that car, you know, everybody they there was four car, three cars that qualified about half a second faster than anybody else at Daytona, and this was 1974, mm -hmm. 75. Mm -hmm. There was it was. Uh, A.J. Foyt's car, <coughs> Harry oh, yes. Hyde's car, the Marcus was in it, I think. A.J. was in Hutch's car, and our car, the Gatorade car. We happened to be third, and Ramos thought mm -hmm. was fourth. So they took the first four, and they caught uh, A.J. and Hutch right away. They had it in the door panel. Mm -hmm. Nitrous, you got to have a bottle and a solenoid. Mm -hmm. They caught his right away. Harry was a good deal. He had his in the radiator. Big, thick radiator, which everybody blocks well, it Well, everybody ran a big radiator. Yeah, today. big, mm -hmm. thick Huge. radiator. Well, the bottle was in the radiator, and then after qualifying, everybody's changing their motors and change radiators. Change radiators, put the race radiator. Nobody knew it. But they caught them with wherever the line was going into the manifold. They checked that. Well, they, didn't, they couldn't catch ours. We had to give it up. Our Tell them where it was. It was on the bar going down <laughs> the deal. I made a, got some hydraulic tubing, and the row bar, Daryl could reach over and turn the bat. It had a little, like a off and on, one of them lever valves. Yeah. He could reach the row bar pad and covered that, and he he could reach over and turn it. Now it went to the intake. To the in, It didn't go to the intake. Because I didn't want no went line to the air filter, it. didn't it? Mm. Went to the air filter underneath. We cut the air filter out where the throttle linkage, like it had to be cut out to clear. And the water temperature gauge, we I took, I didn't do all this. The, we Savannah, down in Savannah, Gulfstream was down there. And yeah. they had the most modern technology in them. Remember them guys used yeah, to come over to the shop? Yeah. They had the most modern technology. She said, and I would talk to them about making something. And they said, I could make something. You know? So I took, we took the water temperature line that come out of the firewall, and it went down in the intake. We put a slit in it. And this guy made the, the, the switch, the gauge itself. He had a micro switch in it, and all you did was reach the dash and turn the front part of the gauge, and it would kick that open the throttle, it would kick that solenoid on in that row bar and the gas too, and pew, shoot right into, the air, right into the air cleaner underneath. And, and they never did catch it. 
and and finally they weren't they made it so hard of us after Sunday's qualifying we never got on the track they made us stare that car all apart in the evenings at night after the five to ten and throw us out then we come in the next morning had to put it all back together and by that time practice was over now this is Wednesday Bill France Jr. come and he said David we know you got it where is it at if you want to race Sunday you better be telling us Bill Gardner he comes to me can they find it I said it's been three days they ain't found it yet <laughs> and he, he said I'm going to sue him and I, oh, I said, you know, no, 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 no. I said, yeah, I said, that's the worst thing you ever, do you ever want to race again? Yeah. I told him, I said, you want to race again? They own the basketball. That's right. And, and I said, just let them have it. He said, well, what are they going to find? I said, they didn't find people back then. They just slapped your hand and, mm -hmm. and made it hard on you. Put well, I, I told him where that, even Bill France said, that's the most genius thing I've ever seen in my life. But didn't Daryl have one on him? That was later. <laughs> now, did, did you get did you get fined? No, no. They, so the, really, they just confiscated it. They just confiscated everything, and they we just had took to put, stuff back in. All they did was yeah, take it from you. Just took it like yeah. the fuel cell, that big fuel cell yeah. we oh, had, and, and yeah. stuff. Now, how pre how prevalent was nitrous in the garage? Oh, it sounds like everybody had it. You remember when well, he had it? You told her how many times he had it just so he could get in the race. In the race, yeah. When you, if you ever, in the engine man would know this. You could be running a motor on a dyno and just take a, the bottle and hold it here to that, right there, the carburetor, and that you'd see them RPMs go up and the horsepower go up. Mm -hmm. That's how it's cooling the fuel. That's all it is. Yep. It's, it's cooling the fuel, nitrous oxide. The drag racers use it all the time and everything. Well, and it was only for really for qualifying. That, Nobody really right. raced because you couldn't put a big enough bottle in there to. Yeah, it, it's just for a qualifying. bottle would last. That pipe we figured out it lasts like 30 seconds, 32 seconds, because yep. we tested it. That row bar deal down there. Well, the lap was 50, 49, 40 something, 49, then. 48 something back then. Well, it helped you when you went by the start finish line. You could do all that in that little short shoot. And then you had it going down that back straightaway. And that's where NASCAR was smart because they clocked everybody's speed down that well, back. Well, they clocked you from corner to corner oh. in the flat, you know. So they had everybody's straightaway speeds from this line to this line, you know, and somebody's four-tenths quicker. Yeah, down down that <laughs> three cars were like four-tenths, five-tenths yeah. quicker down that back straightaway. We picked up seven-tenths at Daytona once. Yeah. Eight-tenths in well, one lap. they just say it was arrow. Huh? Now they just say it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, well, when, you, the when, you, when you triggered it, did you did they trigger the whole the whole bottom the whole the supply whole, or could uh, you the, yeah, the whole turn it on and off? Out. It was gone. Okay. Once you was done qualifying, it was. They gone. couldn't sniff it any after that. Yeah. It was gone. So you could you couldn't just squirt a little bit. No. And, and then could, squirt. Okay. You you could if you had a switch, but I mean, it, even the drag racers right now when they turn it on, it's on. It's gone. Yeah. Then they reload with new bottles. If you try to have a switch, they are going to catch you. You just have they'll, a lever to turn you. it on, and that's it. And that's how they caught Harry Hyde and, and Hutch. They mm -hmm. had the lines going into the manifold. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it's too obvious. It, too obvious. You got two, What do you got going in the manifold? Heat temperature line, and that's it. Yeah. The oil line comes off the block to check the oil pressure. Yeah. You know. That, that's the only thing. And let me tell you, it was this Kodak was just car, basically vapor. Yeah, vapor. The Kodak car sat on the pole a lot down well, there. Well, they had, they had a lot in their rear end housing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they pumped it from the rear end housing. And the four car through, went through the went through the pump, the rear end pump. Yeah, through the pump. Now you're talking about in the Sterling Marlin run pit and, and, uh, and, uh, and Ernie, Ernie Irvin days. And days. And all that. Remember when they run so good at Daytona and Talladega? When Ernie could, when Sterling and Ernie could pull out. And pass four cars, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Toward the and, he ever, and if you watch the show, the races, he never done it till the end of the race. Yeah. It, that's always been the story around town, you know. And I know we got a guy here that uh, works with me here, and he worked on that four car. So he, it's pretty, pretty much. One time I went all right. Work when Bobby <laughs> Hamilton was there. Right. Right. Now I want to get back to the DW having the the nitrous on on him in his suit he didn't have the bottle on him he had the hookup on him okay he now how did that work well we, he had the stuff in on his uniform and then and he would 
you could hook it up. You know what I mean? Like a quick coupler. Yeah. And it was the same deal. We had it in a different bar, though. <laughs> yeah. but I always that, thought, I remember you tell, uh, you know, in one of them private conversations, yeah, you tell me he so had it on him. So I remember that. Was it he really didn't good? have the bar. Well, we put, it had a, he, he had everything on him. The solenoid and everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? All he had to do was plug it into the bar. Yeah, he just plugged in. So he had the bottle. He yeah. had the bottle was on it him. But we only. Uh, now, who had the bottle on him? That was Daryl. I thought yeah, he had the bottle or, or he, well, under his uniform they, or something. We tried that, but hell, you could, you know, you had to have what it was. We'd done that a couple of times. It was a little thin, but it you didn't have enough to, yeah, get you enough to sniff to flag into the. You was out, you know. You could, you got to have a bottle. There's so much, and the size of the orifices too, you know. I haven't done this shit in long time. This nitrous stuff, yeah, but. Uh, I tell you the best They're not doing qualifying it, cheating thing I ever seen in my life, and we never done it. I'll take that back. We did it a couple times, but <laughs> these, <laughs> these guys at Gulfstream was down there. Cale Yarbrough come to drive for us, and back when we go, when you went testing, it's in the twenty-seven car. In the twenty-seven car, Valvoline car. When you went testing, you would take and put your light, your beam across the racetrack, and they didn't have no computers that show all the times and everything. Mm -hmm. You would put your light across, and then you would test and s do changes, and that light would do the time, yep. and it would print it out. It, the data acquisition, what they called it back mm -hmm. then, you had more yep. shit on the car. The stopwatches where your thumbs were just not accurate enough. Yeah, yeah. They weren't accurate. Everybody enough, had but a they quick were pretty finger. damn close. Yeah, they, we used to sit on pit wall and bet. Who would be the oh, closest yeah. when yeah. they announced it for a dollar? Yeah. Herb Knapp, Bud Moore, Jake, mm -hmm. Harry Hyde, all of us would sit there quack and qualifying. And, and whoever would be closest got the pot. Every <laughs> car. So I mean if you was good, you could make about ten, fifteen dollars, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what what did they do on this what did Well I told him, I said, this guy from Gulfstream, he was a engineer or something. Yeah. John. He'd come by the shop all the time. We got to be pretty good friends with him. And he said, what breaks that beam? Where's the beam at? And I said, well, you got this. There's a light beam. I guess you can't, you can't see it, but watch. And w we said it, and I said, you move it. And he said, what breaks that beam? I said, when the car hits it. You know, the car hits it, it breaks the beam. It never heard no more. And about a week later, he comes to me. He says, you want to break that beam before the car gets there? <laughs> And I said, how, how, how the hell are you going to do that? And uh, he said, I'm going to work. Do you, will you do it? And I said, yeah, but if, if I can't, you know, walk out there and break it, <laughs> you could put your hand in front of it and break the beam. He took a camera and put a thing in a camera. I don't know what the hell it was. And you could stand back on pit wall and aim it toward the beam on that side. NASCAR had it for qualifying. They had the same rig. Come back in your spot. They had it for qualifying the same rig. He would take that camera when we went and tested, and he, when Kale was probably 30 yards, 40 yards ahead of that, he hit it, and it break that beam and give you a tenth, two tenths quicker. Which is two football fields at Daytona. Yeah, today. And we got the, the only guys that knew about it was me, Pete Peterson. Yeah. And Ducky Newman. I didn't know about that one. No, you Ducky. didn't know about but it. I was Barry didn't know about yeah, it. I was just a kid yeah, hanging yeah. out then. No, nobody knew about it. Barry or Toucan or none. Did Kale of know about it? No, Kale didn't yeah, know about it. Yeah, you couldn't tell Kale. <laughs> we was going to use it at Rockingham. And Ducky, he's, he's going to take a picture like he's taking a picture. <laughs> He was so nervous. That's Ducky Newman, the engine <laughs> the builder. The engine builder. He was so nervous, he never clicked a damn beam. <laughs> he never clicked it. And, and, you know, we, we happened to sit on the pole anyway. We, yeah. did, we, we didn't need it, but. Yeah, smoked him at Rockingham that day. Yeah, we, in the Book of Valspring Spring or yeah. something. Remember? Yeah, it was wearing him out. Yeah. Yeah, Ducky was, you'd go in the engine shop, and Ducky would be, he'd just have a head up there sighting it, you know. Yeah. And that's how hands-on he was with uh and he we only had you know back now they got 20 guys what they had ducky and Lula yeah. rosa yeah. so the next right? the next year that's when i became the full-time weekend guy doing the tires when you left and tim brewer was there and we went to talladega 
and we slotted the spoiler on the back of Kel's car. It's a 27 Valvoline Purdish car I've worked on. But you know, you put a big, big, on the spoiler, a big piece of metal across the back. Well, we, everybody slotted their spoiler. In the middle. Yeah, yeah and then you made the big washers went and you had in a truck and you had a four and a half inch spoiler. So we slotted the spoiler and made, made our own washers. You couldn't buy them as big as the slot was. <laughs> well, we went through inspection and uh, they measured the spoiler, four and a half inches. We're going to the gas pumps, me and Barry and Ed Threat and Pete, we're pushing the car, Pete's driving it and we're pushing. We all got quarter inch drive ratchets and we're undoing that spoiler and sliding spoiler it up. Out. So we got a whole nother inch of spoiler on that car. And before we get to the gas pump, uh, uh, Gazaway, the, the younger one, come over. He said, stop that car. Joe, Gazaway, Joe, Joe, Joe. Joe. Joe said, stop that car. And we stopped. He said, take one of them bolts out of the back of that spoiler right there. Well, I happen to have a quarter-inch drive <laughs> <laughs> Here's everybody coming by laughing, pointing fingers. We took a bolt out. I took it out. Just what I thought. He saw the slot. Somebody. And so I was this 18-year-old kid. And on the, on the team, he looked at me. He said, boy, you go get me a drill and 3 sixteenths drill bit and some extension cords and pop rivets, and you get back here now. Man, I took off running. <laughs> and, bro, and everybody's laughing at us, and we think the petties told on us. That's what they said. So we drilled that back of that car full of and pop rivets all in. Where well, you couldn't move it. You couldn't move yeah. it. And he said, if y'all ever do this again, none of you will race. You got that, Brewer? You got that threat? You know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Gasway. So we go on the gas pumps, put that car on the line. Bad thing is, they never remeasured it. We re brought it, it and then we had five and a half inches of spoiler. <laughs> it was still down where they put it down. We raced with five and a half inches of spoiler. They never. They talk, I'm just glad I never cheated like y'all did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that for one minute. I worked with you, Pete. I cannot believe. <laughs> Not according to the podcast stuff. you were on, Bob. And well, <laughs> I learned a lot from a certain guy I worked for. Jake. Junior. All Junior. Of them. Yeah. Junior. Dale. Dale Inman. Dale, Dale never, he called it uh, stretching the rules. rules. But yeah. you talk about Dale well, We Inman. didn't call it cheating. Nobody called if, it cheating. No. Like you said, somebody squealed on you or with that. Yeah. If I seen something, I we, didn't have to. We call. did it ourselves. We would do it. We wouldn't tell on nobody. No. But if I wanted some, I seen something on another car that I wanted to know that it was wrong. All I had to do was go tell Jake Elder <laughs> or Dale Edmond. Yeah, Dale Edmond. Dale Edmond. I'd tell him first, and you could walk away and everything, and it, you could watch him. It'd be five minutes. Hey, there he goes in NASCAR trailer. <laughs> yeah. He going over there to tell. You know what Harry Hyde's That's doing? <laughs> you know, when, 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 when Daryl won the first Winston All-Star yeah. and, and hand-grenaded the motor Perfect. right after the line, yeah. Dale Lemon walked by me and grabbed my arm. He said, go tell him to check, go tell him to check the gas cans. Go tell him to check the gas cans. You know, so I'm like, what's he telling me this for, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? But, you know, it was working for Dale. He uh, he never did really do any of the uh, obvious. obvious. Yeah. He never would do the obvious stuff. But he, uh, he was too busy we pinching did, everybody's arm. But oh, we did goodness. 10 obvious things so they would catch them so we could get by with the thing yeah. that we wanted to get you by with. You were the worst, though, for me, you <laughs> and Brewer <laughs> and I don't forget who else. Maybe Barry. I, I, you, I, I would have rather cheated and won the race than go legal and then won the race. Do then, <laughs> then, don't, then don't do anything and run 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. Jake is our crew chief. We'll Here's go the to deal. Texas. Everybody was doing it against you. Yeah. You I mean, had to do it. Yeah. But we go to Texas. We sit on the pole with Terry. Remember? Yeah. Well, that night, all of you told them that there wasn't no way we could run with that kind of setup in that car. I think you were in on that deal. I know I Brewer was. Know. Uh, yeah. And yeah. they all convinced Jake that that was just the yeah. wrong setup for the race. We go in Sunday morning. Jake changes everything on. Oh, he was great for that. I mean, yeah, he dropped them springs and listened to them. Yeah, I say he'd drop a spring and listen to how it push yeah, on. Put the wedge in. No, no wedge. So we out there cigarettes. Yeah. We get out there on the track. We're riding around. They throw the green flag. Terry goes into one, spins out. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how good y'all were yeah, yeah. messing yeah. with that man. We went to remember the. Old Milwaukee car, and the first year we got Tim Richmond, or second year when Barry became the crew chief. Yeah. So we tested down there, 
and we stretched the nose out on that Pontiac. And, I mean, we stretched it out like it's three or four inches, but, boy, that thing was hooked up. Well, the problem was, you remember, they had three, four templates, the long template, your two-door templates, and your nose and tail, so the nose fit. Well, the long template, when you did the long template, it had a notch on the end. On the front to go over the front of the... Well, the front end, our front end was out here, and the notch, it just set up on the car. (laughs) But if... So we, we developed a plan... So we sent Red Dog and Todd, remember back in the day when you had to make your own templates off of NASCARs? You, so, yeah, you'd take a piece of plywood to the racetrack. Yeah, you, it, yeah. you'd take plywood or construction paper, then you come back and trace out aluminum, and you had to make your own templates. Yeah, they didn't give them to your sell them back then. So we sent Red Dog, Buddy Barnes, and Todd Parrott over to the NASCAR center to trace the template. All right, when they got there, they've had snips in their pocket. We was going to have to cut the notch off the front of that template. <laughs> this is true story. They cut it off a of NASCAR. We was going to have to go off a of NASCAR's template. We was not going to get this car through with that notch that came over the nose. So when Red Dog got there, he stopped and called. He said, I'm getting ready to go inside. Well, when he went inside, they went back there. and uh, Tracing uh, them out. The, the flag man, Harold Kinder, was working. He said, come on back here. And Harold was watching them trace trace it out trace the template and they had to trace the whole thing because we is all a ruse so judy tucker was our secretary <laughs> she called and said i need to speak to harold kinder so they called harold <laughs> kinder to the phone which left red dog and todd all by themselves <laughs> with that template and they, it was eighth inch so they had they cut the nose they cut the notch off the front off of the, the nascar door. template when we got to daytona now remember the template would go on the nose, and not they to the head. Have a backup either. And no Pontiac there fit it, but ours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that I remember when it went through the corner. Dale Emmons said that car right there is hooked up, and we cut that template, NASCAR template, and they ran it the rest of the year. That thing was, <laughs> you know, because we had a long car, and Tim went in the corner, and that car inverted. It got up in the air, and we wrecked it and didn't get to race it. But we cut the NASCAR template, and they run it the whole season. <laughs> Yep. Oh, True story. No yep. wonder I couldn't win no races. <laughs> <laughs> now, David, when you and Daryl were together, the the most well known story that I think I've heard him tell is about the buckshot and yelling bombs away and all that kind of thing. Did you have a code word on the radio, or did he do that well, on his own? The, it, when we got caught, the code word didn't work. <laughs> 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 he was supposed to pull. We had a pin in the frame rail. Mm-hmm. We'd pull it up and go out the right fall out the bottom. It, fall out the bottom on the racetrack. Did it during caution? Yeah, but when he when we pitted, a lot of it didn't come out on the caution. He should have pulled it after the. It he came pulled out on pit road. And come out on pit road and a big pile of it there, and I mean we're, we're caught. We're, says, we're caught what's this? Yeah. <laughs> we're, what the, the, when the you leave a trail, work. that's kind of a clue. Well, yeah, but <laughs> if it left a trail on the racetrack, it'd have been different. But it left the trail from our pits going out the racetrack, <laughs> and and then we were caught red in. That, that was at Bristol. That was at Wooksboro. Wilkesboro with, with Daryl. With Daryl. Yeah. How many times did you use it? Well, it's hard for me to remember all that. There. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's easier. How many times did you not use yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. What? What? Another thing. How stupid now we were. We had a gas tank that they. They didn't tear them out and measure them or anything then. They just stuck a rule down in the side right. of it, yep. pulled it over, okay, 20 you, by, what were they, no 7 way, by? No way it could be cheated up. You, no, you, you hit all the measurements. Yeah, you hit all the measurements. How could it be cheated up? Well, they used to put the cars up in the trailer at night. Well, the mm-hmm. rack was square tubing, flat, bolted down. They measured everything. Well, we had a gas tank made like to a gas tank over gas tank. And then in a big bladder, when you filled it, the top would come up. It held 26 gallons. Yeah, it was just sitting over the bottom, so it just slid up. It just when you filled it full of gas, gas. It just the bladder pushed it up because we had a special bladder made. Well, at night, when we put the car away, put a different rack on there. We'd put a different rack that had pegs on it. Yeah. 
So the a lot of cars had pegs on it because of their fuel cell was up higher, that, yeah. and that's how you regulate where you're Because you load your car. You, a lot of nights you do, are we going to load the car? And we always loaded <laughs> the You car. always loaded it how the car. Because you work sucked. on it in the truck. The garage stuck. The whole roof yeah. would fall in yeah. on the car. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when that was So we, while you're loading it and you pull the door down, we in there switching the fuel switching cell racks. Switching the fuel cell out. The we racks. never had no big fuel <laughs> cells when I worked at Junior. We had a. I tell you what, we won a race with it. We went about eight laps further than than anybody else did. And one, one, yeah. I don't know where it, where it was at. But well, Jeff went 17 laps farther than David oh. did at Charlotte that one time. Yeah. Remember the helmet that we had with Benny's? And we with tore the, the inside of the helmet out, and the helmet weighed 100 pounds. We poured it full of lead. So so take the helmet, and you pour it full of hot lead and let it melt, and then you or let it harden, and Grind the it helmet out, weighed the, 100 pounds. And you could, you could put the helmet in the car when you went through inspection. Like it was laying there. Yeah. They never yeah. lifted yeah. the helmet. Yeah. We had a roll of tape that looked, it oh, was yeah. lead, looked yeah. like a roll of tape, the goggle box, the bubble. Yeah. It was you leave that on the dash. And they so. never reached in there. You just went through. And they never weighed the cars after the race. We, yeah. We'd have 120, 30 pounds on yeah. that car. But, for, the, but the, hard the, race part, part. the hard part was, and then you get ready to put Benny in the car, you know, about, Oh my gosh! We don't have the right helmet. We got we got to get the radio yeah, helmet. Get the so radio the helmet. Practice helmet. <laughs> what was the guy? So the guy had to walk back. We put the biggest guy with that hundred pound helmet in your right hand, and you had to be real cool walking back to the truck because you were carrying a hundred pounds in this hand alone. And well, uh, put the right helmet in there. So we was a hundred pounds light. With that thing. Remember Long time. Juniors, Long we had them uh, wheels on the right side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't he have wheels poured full of lead? Yeah, I always heard. Yeah, we we would uh, start the race on. We were at Wilkesboro, and we was about to get lapped. I mean, we couldn't get our own way with them. Wheels. They didn't have 200 pounds here. <laughs> and Terry Labonte, he's driving, and finally, he just acts like the motor quits running, stops right under the flag stand, and they throw the caution. We didn't get lapped, so we come in. Get them wheels off. Come in, got them wheels on. Yeah. And when we get them, we always, like you said, we always took the big sky to pick them up and carry them back. You got to get them over. Well, there wasn't no wall at Wilkesboro. Yeah, yeah. And you just rolled them so back there the best you could. Right. But boy, and you, like you said, after the race, they didn't weigh the car. No, they never. And we took off. We won the race after we took them wheels yeah. off. You used two tenths quicker than everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. Two <laughs> tenths slower before you took them off. Oh, more than that when you had them. Now, what did you ask about the the wheels with lead? What, I, from what I always understood, that Junior Johnson had a of wheels that he would qualify with and they qualify bad you know they didn't sit on a lot of poles killed in and inside the wheel they had a, a, a trough in there and they were full of lead so every wheel was maybe 40 50 pounds heavy that he would qualify with and start the race and if you remember kale would go backwards when the race started and after the first pit stop they got them wheels and tires off and he'd mow the field down be one or two laps this is in the 70s when we won three championships in a row He'd be a lap or two on the field. They'd come in in the last pit stop and put them heavy wheels and tires back on and go out when they did start weighing cars. And it was always on short tracks because they had inner liners yeah. on the big tracks. They, they couldn't, couldn't do them wheels liner. on the big tracks. But on the, short on the short track. Now, where was the lead? In the it, it made a just just imagine the wheels round. They made a like a like a trough that went all the way around it inside of it, and then poured all that full of lead, sealed her off. And he'd qualify and run with those. I've always heard that. I've yeah, never seen them. But, but I, I learned uh, some stuff when Harold Elliott became our engine builder, and he was up there, and so he told us a lot of that stuff. I can't believe we ever done anything like that. It yeah. was, I believe <laughs> it. <laughs> I do believe it. One thing we did have at Junior's we did was in the left side, we took and put a worm gear all the way down through the frame rail, took a 80-pound piece of tungsten, could move it from front to rear. <clears throat> could move it. We put two motors, one at the back of the frame rail, one at the other, and that worm gear would run. And on the bottom of that tungsten, it had little wheels. It slid it in the frame and rail. you could yeah. hit the switch like you needed more nose weight. You could gain 2% two, two, uh, more nose weight mm -hmm. moving it back and forth. Need to get it out of there. In the <laughs> well, we, we ran it, and we, we were testing it, and Terry's messing with it during practice over at Charlotte. Well, he comes in, he meant the old garage area. He comes in, pulls up, just so happens. Dick's standing there talking to Junior up against that old workbench we had back in. And Terry comes in and he stops. 
All of a sudden, the dash just goes. It, they, we hear something going. <laughs> <laughs> the switch. And the whole, uh, <laughs> Dick says, he ain't stopped talking to June, but he's looking at the car. The thing going, <laughs> Bro, I said, things are running hot. Now, how'd it go said, again? <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was winding. You right. could hear it everywhere. And all of a sudden, the whole dash just went up in smoke. <laughs> Well, that was the end of that. <laughs> we went to uh, Daytona one time with Rusty in the in the Grand Prix, and you know how you would square everything off sharp, I mean, yeah. it wouldn't fit none of you know they had a round template for the, the tail, bumper, yeah. all up around the car, so nothing fit. No Pontiacs got through inspection. Everything was sharp as could be, and they said you're gonna have to fix it. You ain't going out for practice. So in the old garage, the clash was over. So you couldn't do Bondo work around there, but you had to go pick you out a garage and, and, and work on the car. So we went over Behind there. Behind the truck. Yeah. yeah. Well, we taped up the windows, and we had our own stall over there when the Bush Clash cars had gone. We taped up the windows, got the primer, got the Bondo out, and went in there, and, and uh, we mixed up Bondo and primer, and we primed all the car. Every place the car didn't fit the template, we just sprayed primer on it. We mixed up Bondo, cheese raked it at every corner, we picked it up and rubbed it all over for <laughs> dust and all that. And the inspectors come in. He said, y'all the only ones here that's worked on your car. Popped a sticker on there, and we went out and qualified. We never touched the race car. <laughs> just made a whole scene that looked like looked we like did. Prior. Yep. yep. They, that was a Kodak car. Kodiak. Yeah, yep. Kodiak. Yep. Kodiak. Kodiak. Yeah. And went out and qualified. Yep. But never remember, did change yeah. a thing on the car. You remember when Gary brought that one guy in there? He still works, I think. And we called him Bumpersher. You remember him? He went around with a – Gary gave him one job, and that was to take – down at Talladega, take the rear bumper template to each car and go by, and it had – you know, it would either be too narrow or too wide yeah. or something. Yeah. That boy caught more cussing in one day than any man I ever <laughs> But, you know, the, the racing nowadays have changed so much, and I know yeah. people might not want to hear, but – you can't get away with all that stuff no, now. No, no, yeah, no. The way the rules are. That's why they like this, David. Yeah. That's well, why people like this. This that is authentic. You could, you could do because inspectors, believe it or not, you could give them a jacket or a couple I, of hats and stuff. And I won't tell this who it was, but I, when I was the kid, you see, I'm, I'm the young one in the group, <laughs> but I got to be with all this because I was a kid growing up. I personally was handed a bag of cash. To going into Daytona one morning, so this inspector would let us put our carburetor on the car, and it was a bag of hundred dollar bills, and they said, "Let John carry it. Nobody's gonna bother him." Yep. Nobody. Yep. And I carried that bag of cash in there and handed it back to the engine builder. We always had people coming in Daytona back doors and stuff. And 